This is what freedom looks like. After 12 years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit, Herman Atkins walked out of Ironwood Prison in California <laughs> and into the loving arms of his family. <laughs> embracing a son who was only two when Atkins was locked up. Is the journey over? Um, can we, we go? take him home? At last, Herman Atkins was going home. And imagine if, I mean, the suffering that I've been and do what I can imagine what my family have went to as a result of, uh, you know, being wrongfully accused of something and then having to face a, a 40. Father, husband, social rights advocate, and supporter of the Innocence Project, Herman Atkins is an inspiration to all. But 34 years ago, Herman was none of this. In the eyes of many, including our own judicial system, Herman was a criminal a rapist and thief who walked into a shoe store in Lake Elsinore, California, sometime between 11.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. on April 6, 1986, prepared to rob a woman at gunpoint and violate both her body and soul with his horrendous acts. It all seemed like a normal day in Lake Elsinore. The birds were chirping, the sun was shining, People were walking about beating to their own drum as they go about their day. But the morbid events that would occur on this sunny April day would forever change the lives of many. While the victim has preferred to remain anonymous following the developments made in the case, she did indeed testify directly following the crime. She accounts that she was raped and robbed at gunpoint inside of a shoe store. During the rape, the assailant ejaculated and wiped the semen from his genitals onto her sweater. After calling the police, she was taken to the hospital where vaginal swabs were collected along with her clothing, including the pink sweater with the semen stains. This evidence was later collected and marked for identification. The victim was taken to the police station and shown Elsinore High School yearbooks, but the assailant was unable to be found. She didn't identify Atkins as her assailant until after she was taken to the police station briefing room where she saw a wanted poster for him on completely unrelated charges. After seeing the wanted poster, she was shown a photo lineup and identified Atkins as her assailant. Atkins used mistaken eyewitness identification as his defense. He presented an alibi witness and testified on his own behalf. In addition to the eyewitness identifications, the prosecution provided testimony from a criminalist with the state of California's Riverside Laboratory. The criminalist testified that the semen found on vaginal swabs was deposited by someone with blood type A and PGM2 plus 1 plus. This typing was consistent with both the victim and Atkins. The criminalist also testified that the semen stain recovered from the victim's sweater revealed the presence of a type A secretor and that about an astonishing 25.9% of the black population have type A blood and 80% of the population are secretors. Further, he testified that approximately 21.4% of the population, both Caucasian and black, have PGM type 2 plus 1 plus. He concluded that, based on these numbers, Atkins was included in a population of approximately 4.4% of people who could have committed this rape. The prosecutor argued during summation that this evidence was evidence which quote unquote can't be used to say this is exactly the defendant but it excludes a large percentage of the people and does not exclude him and that's corroboration. Obviously Atkins case was accepted by the Innocence Project in 1993 after being wrongfully tried. Like all the best stories, this one has a happy ending. After locating the sweater and vaginal swabs in 1995, the Innocence Project began trying to gain access to the evidence for DNA testing. The prosecution, however, refused to allow access to the evidence. In 1999, the Innocence Project filed a motion to compel the prosecutor to relinquish control of the evidence and send it to a laboratory for the purposes of DNA testing. The motion was granted and the evidence was sent to the Forensic Science Associates. Many of these red flags helped to confirm the inevitable truth that Herman Atkins is indeed an innocent man.
After receiving the specimens, which contain, consisted of biological evidence used at trial, DNA testing was done on the semen stains found on the victim's sweater. Testing was conducted on three separate areas of the sweater. In all three areas, the results were consistent. The spermatosia found out was determined to be from someone else other than Atkins. Based on these test results, Herman Atkins was released from prison in February 2000 after spending 12 years in prison for a crime he indeed did not commit. Without DNA testing, would you still be in prison today? Yes, no doubt. No, no, there is no doubt. No doubt about it. Besides time, what did losing 12 years of your life rob you of? Of many opportunities. It robbed me of uh, a relationship uh, with my father. A relationship with my grandma. With my grandma, excuse me. Um, it robbed me of, of any opportunity in life. You want to hold ball for me? Ecstatic to be free, Atkins says it's the little things in his life he appreciates, like playing with his young nephew, or seeing his stepfather for the first time in years. How are you doing, huh? He hopes his case will bring attention to the many others he believes are wrongly convicted and remain in prison. Although justice eventually was served and Herman was freed, I find my emotional reaction to be rather bittersweet. While it's a great thing an innocent man was taken off the streets, it has become too common of a story to hear. While Herman may seem alone, he is one of thousands upon thousands of innocent individuals who had their lives and reputations tarnished over nothing other than false or incomprehensive evidence. While I am glad Herman is out and thriving, I just wish this side of our criminal justice system wasn't swept under the rug so much. There's no such thing as a perfect system, so the least we can do is educate others from our mistakes and help prevent anything similar in the future. Thank you.